and okay. um, you have an amount for the other two. So I think it's 200K there. Is that it? Yep, I'll, I'll um, go Pop back that and in. reconcile that and put that in there. Yes. Okay. Um, anyone want to make a motion to accept the minutes as corrected? So moved. I so moved. And Second. well, I, why, we, why don't I move just because it's Peter's minutes? It might make it seem a little easier, better. And I'll second. <laughs> All in favor, we have to All do right. it name by name. Peter Galatano. Aye. Peter Moores. Aye. Corlin to Lincoln. Aye. Okay, we're good to go. Okay, now, Don, um, I don't know how you want to handle this, but if you want to start yeah, so, talking yeah. through. Sure, actually, um, we'll, so we'll do Pine Hill first, and that way Dennis can um, uh, hopefully leave before uh, we have to do the region. Uh, so I did send um, to you, Corey, mm -hmm. um, a, uh, a more recent quote that we have for the project that we have yes. on for 24, along with a revised five-year plan, given that we were um, able to lower the placeholder number that we had on for the one project that we're bringing forward, which is the EMS upgrade replacement at Pine Hill. Um, just for those of you who've been around for a couple of years and heard us talk about capital, we did a, um, a, 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 a pretty large EMS upgrade at the region two years ago, we followed with uh, Chickering this past summer, and our plan was to then bring Pine Hill onto the same system um, in this for this coming summer. Um, so basically, it's going to allow our uh, director of facilities to have um, online vision of all of our buildings. Um, and that would be very uh, sort of more efficient for him to be able to go and troubleshoot, uh, to program for efficiencies, and to just have more um, insight into what's happening on all of our uh, building systems for um, the districts. The uh, current EMS system at Pine Hill is was installed in 2007. Um, they give that an estimated useful life of 15 years. We have bumped that project out for two years um, based on the timing on of on-site insight mainly to complete the projects that we have slated for the other schools. We didn't wanna do more than one school um, a summer just to make sure we had a smooth transition. Uh, so Pine Hill was the last one to go um, on the docket. And so we are bringing that forward uh, for fiscal year 24, 40,000 for that upgrade. Could you tell me what EMS is? Oh, I'm sorry. I talk about like <laughs> energy management system. You can call it energy management system, the building, some call it BMS, building management system. Okay, thank um, you. So it's really uh, the system that controls, say, the boilers, the HVAC equipment. Um, it's sort of the brains of everything that happens. And then that you can set your operating parameters. So, you know, you want your, um, it was, was a huge deal during COVID. If you know, we kept purging our buildings. Um, so that system with that schedule is what runs all of your systems. Thank you. Peter. Um, FMC that actually provided the quote is the contractor um, who did um, the two installs that we've already uh, completed at the region and at Chickering. So it's nice to have their continuity. And I think that helped in the pricing as well. Do we, do we know if this quote includes any sort of, um, sort of cybersecurity built-in services on this so that someone can't like hack into the system and control the boilers at our school? You um, know, kind of the notion that cybersecurity, yeah, someone can get into your Nest, uh, you know, thermostat, et cetera. Yeah, they have to go through our system. Um, so where it's um, built in with our firewalls. In fact, sometimes from the outside is actually a little bit of an issue to get in. So. Um, and we have all the cyber um, security uh, measures at the region. Um, and then we also have carried the insurance for all that as well um, on our policy in case that would happen. Okay, thanks. I know a lot of them require like persistent upgrades. So I didn't know if the system would get software upgrades continually as part of the contract too. Oh, it does. We'll do an annual maintenance contract <laughs> that includes any necessary upgrades on, a, on an annual basis. Which we currently do with, um, which we currently do with our older systems as well. Okay, great. 
Peter, do you have any, yeah. Delatano, you have a question? Uh, no, thank you. Oh, okay. I just so, had one follow up. Is this going to add uh, any of the sort of annual maintenance costs, um, like this system versus the old system, or is it pretty much just maintenance costs will stay stable? Yeah, the annual, uh, the annual service contract that we'll have with FMC is equal to the one that we currently have with RP O'Connell, who's our existing um, EMS contractor. Um, it's only, um, I think our contract is less than $3,000 for the annual um, service. Great, thank you. Um, De just, Dennis, just anything? I was going to say just to look, I mean, that's the only thing we have for 24, just looking out in our um, future years. I just wanted to uh, highlight that um, that what's slated right now for 25 um, is the roof replacement. We're, we're probably, we've had um, a lot of discussions um, about the roofs at all the four schools. If you remember, that's what the town's actually funded for the region last year was um, the starting of the roof, roof restoration actually of the middle school in Lenquist. Um, we did have a consultant come out and look at all of our rooftops and give us some uh, estimated costs and sort of like what our uh, remaining life is on those rooftops without having to worry about um, any kind of substantial uh, damage to buildings from uh, le uh, leaks, et cetera. Um, they, we still have some time on um, the remaining roofs that we haven't done yet, which we'll talk a little bit about when we talk about it, the region. I just also wanted to highlight, and I brought this up when we met with the select board, that um, I think before we move forward with such a large investment in that building that the town probably wants to sit back and think about the future of the, pipe, the building itself um, and um, looking at the age of the building and, and, and probably uh, pause a little bit before we start putting large dollars um, into the existing Pine Hill. So I just wanted to float that out to the Capital Committee because we had mentioned that um, when we met with the select board. Do you know if there's um, grants or, or some sort of state funding for roof repair for schools or matching funds or anything? You know, there used to be what they call the accelerated repair program. They actually paused that this year. Um, the one caveat to that too is that um, it's a limited amount of funds. And so what they were doing on an annual basis was continuing to push out with like the ages of projects that were gonna be funded to lessen the number of um, school districts that were going to qualify. And it was getting for rooftops, it was getting to be 30, 30 plus years. Um, and we're only in the 20s right now. So um, that was probably going to be something that might not be a, obtainable for us. Um, and then they actually paused it this year. So they didn't even run their program this year. So that becomes a little harder to, fi to find state funding um, for repairs and replacements. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. Dennis, did you have anything you wanted to add? <clears throat> no, I think Don summarized it. Um, it gives us a little more control over how it is we use a lot of the um, sort of energy and facilities within the building itself. Um, and I think that that sort of will set us up well to understand sort of um, what we can do to manage the current building and then think about what, um, what options we have going forward. It gives us a lot more data and insight into, um, into how we kind of manage that, that property overall. Thank you. Um, if we have no further questions, Don, do you want to move on to um, the region? Region, absolutely. Sorry, if I just have one final question, mostly for the notes, but uh, what's the life expectancy of this uh, this project? Um, they give um, the years. EMS systems approximately fifteen years. Okay. A lot of it is, um, if you think about hardware and software, which is why it doesn't have, um, you know, a, say 20 or 25 years, um, if you think about it from, from a, a technology standpoint. Thank you. 
Okay, um, for the region, um, for fiscal year 24, our largest project um, that we are requesting is to fund the replacement of seven rooftop air handlers um, on the high school rooftop. Um, I have provided for you a an existing um, conditions report that we had prepared back in August by GG&D Consulting Engineers. I think that gives you sort of a, a good understanding of the, the makeup of the seven rooftop units, um, along with their um, assessment that they are um, uh, passing their useful life and that they do need to be replaced. Um, and with those and with the replacement, we're going to be picking up some enhancements really that are uh, part of the current energy codes for the CO2 demands, ventilation control, and the energy recovery section. Um, it's going to just give us more current technology, which uh, by, by the process of that should be energy saving for us. Um, this is um, the rooftop units are both uh, provide pr predominantly our air exchange the air conditioning in the summer, and then it's just backup heat in the um, in the winter because we have baseboard heat um, uh, powered by our boilers. Um, and so it does serve multiple purposes. We had initially um, had actually the, if you've looked at this plan from last year to see what we had on fiscal year 24, we had, um, we're gonna continue our roof replacement and uh, attack the high school. But if you look at the landscape of the rooftop at the high school and you see how much real estate these um, seven rooftop units take up, we actually thought it would be pr more prudent to go ahead and replace all that heavy equipment before we um, tackle the roof restoration and we, um, the, the high school was one of the buildings on the region that actually had minimal um, water um, leaks at the point, but we did have some repairs done, which will hold. And so we are able to sort of flip-flop those projects. Um, and so we're bringing forward um, the rooftop air, air handler unit. One thing that we're going to be battling with, though, in the current... Um, environment is that we are not going to be able to do it this current summer. Uh, with the lead times on equipment such as this, we're probably going to have to wait until summer of fiscal year 25, but we need to get the project moving and get the things ordered. So we are asking for um, the funding, um, get it approved project in fiscal year 24 so that we can get the process rolling and be ready to roll it out in 25. How often do these fail, the current ones? Um, we are uh, constantly repairing the current ones. Um, uh, there, are, there are pieces that are just, and it's, it's all various types of repairs that we're doing, um, but they are, there's, there's quite a few repairs being um, performed on all of these seven. I would say there's two that more than others. Um, but that's why we had the engineers come out and assess it. So we really understood what we were dealing with. And that's in addition to the routine maintenance that two are sketchy and the other five are working? Yes, but with there's, there's you know, small repairs, um, not, you know, not large repairs at this point in time, we wouldn't make any um, large um, replacements with um, some of the, the in, inner interior workings of the <clears throat> rooftop units, but you are you are definitely um, we are definitely struggling a little bit with um, the age of these units. How old are they? Uh, they were um, twenty twenty. They they were all redone when the high school was renovated, so two thousand three. And we didn't consider just replacing the two that need extensive repair and then phase these in over time? No, I think because of what we want to do with the roof re restoration also, it makes sense just to go ahead and do them all. And why? Because they all are deemed to be at a point of ex exceeding their useful life. But they still work, except for the two. Well, I mean, there's two that I I can say get more repairs than others, but they all are having some kind of issues here and there. 
you also are dealing with sort of the the, the lacking of the energy efficiency of these um, units because of their age. Have, have you been able or is, <clears throat> to get a good assessment on how much uh, savings there would be from using these new units, um, can, you know, versus the maintenance and operational costs of the old units? Well, I mean, initially that will definitely be savings because of the, we probably are, um, I would say uh, with our HVAC repair um, companies, we're probably been spending uh, on top of our annual maintenance contract, probably um, twenty five or thirty thousand a year on just repairs. That's the whole campus. So I can't uh, in my head, I don't have it broken out between uh, high school, middle school, um, Lindquist, the gyms, but um, they are, I mean, they're they're aged and they are um, constantly needing some kind of tweaks and there's just a lot more to be had with uh, bringing in the newer machine with the already energy um, standard codes that are built into those that we don't have right now. So that's a 36 year payback <clears throat> um, on just the repair costs. So the. But I, that's excluding if we had to do, say, a large compressor or you know, one of the larger pieces of, of uh, the um, makeup of the units. Right, right. I'm just concerned that it's a million dollars this year, a million dollars, 1.4 for next year for the roof. And we're replacing them because they're just old. The two, yes, I could see we could, you know, uh, maybe get some payback if, uh, they absorb a bulk of the 30 grand a year in repair costs. But, you know, just to, a, a nice to have because they're old. Uh, well, I don't, I, I, okay. So I'm not saying they're nice. They're, we're nice to have because they're old. I have an engineering study that says they are in need of replacement. Because they're old. Because they are they're not failing. functioning. Because they're not functioning. Um, now, all right, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll throw you a lifeline here. What's the um, material that uh, is a compliant refrigerant in it? I know there's a specific refrigerant nowadays that... Well, this is the DX coils. So I, um, it's, it's different than the... Uh, that so that there is refrigerant in the uh, units on the middle school, which is the retrofit for the air conditioning. I think the rooftop units at the high school, because they are multi-purpose, um, work a little differently. Okay, so there's no environmental concern about the refrigerant. Don, I was contacted by um, Gino Carlucci, who I think is on our sustainability committee and he's the town yeah. planner in Sherburn. Yes, yeah, so that's Carlo. Yeah. Yeah. And he had asked about um uh heat pumps that if you were going to replace these compressors, had you considered heat pumps? Um now we've talked about heat pumps for the boilers, um, but not for the rooftop units. Okay. And I will say, yes. <laughs> Those rooftop units are heat pumps. It's the same thing. If you have an air conditioner running a rooftop unit, it's essentially a heat pump. It's just going into a ducted system. There's essentially no difference, but 20 year old equipment is, is, is so outdated. It's just. Well, and I think the thing too, is we're projecting it for further out because we're going to have to get the equipment in things, you know, they're, they're, it's at the end of its life and so we're right. trying to project yeah, yeah. out for to get it in because unfortunately the equipment's just it's not readily available anymore um since COVID happened this has become an ongoing issue any other questions <clears throat> this is mostly for uh hvac though but it, it sounds like they would be running 
more than just in the sort of hotter summer months because it's, it's the ventilation system, right? Like is it, so it's, it's constantly it's running in order to yeah, make sure that. It's the air exchange, but it's also in the winter. It's a little bit of the backup heat to balance out the um, baseboard heating. And, so and it I mean, does, it I does run. There's, yeah. There's some safety standards there are for schools and, and things like that. Is are there been times in which we've dipped below the safety school, the safety standards for schools due to the you know malfunctioning uh, of any of these units? Um, no, we've never been outside of safety. And in fact, you know, um, we've upgraded the filters in all of our HVAC equipment um, based on the, you know, the, the COVID um, requirements. And um, although that's a little more taxing on your equipment because they're, um, uh, you know, the, the um, filters are harder for the, the equipment to sort of pump the air through, we haven't had any significant issues with that. Thank you. Do you want to move on to classroom floors? Uh, yes. Yeah. So our second uh, project is classroom floors, and this is in the high school math wing. It's the um, all the classrooms and the hallways in the wing that is going to finish off the majority of our flooring replacement in the high school. As you know, we've been uh, we've had floors. Um, I think almost every year for the last couple of years. So we are finishing up um, the bulk of the high school. You have a quote um, from our um, current provider, Atkinson Flooring, which is based off of a state contract um, for the ultra quartz tile. Um, and you have it by room, uh, the materials and laborers broken out. Um, and so the total project cost is approximately 120,000 when you round the 118,000 uh, price quote from uh, Atkinson. Um, these floors are original to the upgrade as well. They're the BCT uh, five floor tiles. They have um, cracks and are lifting in some of the areas. Um, we are also um, excited to be able to replace the flooring with something other than VC tiles, which requires the annual summer maintenance of uh, stripping and waxing. Um, so we have uh, alleviated that in the majority of all of our school buildings with the replacement of tiles, um, which uh, gives us um, more manpower to do things that we uh, put off in the summer, as well as saving us costs for the um, strip and wax um, materials, and it's much cleaner for the environment. With the same warranty, um, length of warranty that the old VC tiles did have. Questions have you anyone? been able to sort of generally quantify what the savings would be in, in maintenance going forward? Uh, yeah, we probably spend um, at least three or four thousand in a building, say, for the supplies for the stripping and waxing. That also um, is, if you add in that, the equipment, special equipment that we have to have. Um, if you depreciated that, that would add more to it. Um, there's a lot of uh, not true savings in that our employees will still be with us, but we're able to get to more um, uh more work that's probably better for the building than spending moving furniture in and stripping and waxing. So um, it's a very tedious process that we that we have right, eliminated there's, there's in in a big uh, part of our schools. Man hour opportunity cost essentially. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm sorry, what's the type of the new tile that you're proposing? I think it's um, on the quote. But... Yeah, it's called an ultra quartz. Um, it's uh, similar to a, what they call luxury vinyl tile, LVT. It's just a different brand of LVT, um, the quartz. Now, I'm sure that there's some maintenance on that stuff that I should be doing at my own house. Uh, is that built into your plan of, of how you're actually going to maintain it better than I do? Yeah, well, it's not a whole lot of maintenance, to be honest with you. Um, there's, it's just really good cleaning with your floor machine. Um, with appropriate uh, cleaner, but it's it's not a lot of maintenance other than that. Um, if you want to think, if you've been in the middle school, the floors and their hallways, this is the flooring um, that we're putting in the uh, the high school math wing. Um, 
<laughs> and again, sort of for the notes, what's your expected uh, lifespan of the new tile? Uh, 20, 20, 25 years. Thank you. And your third item is bathrooms? Uh, yes, we have two more items, which we're still working on quotes. Um, and uh, the, the third one is the two student bathrooms that are in Lenquist Common. So that's where our cafeteria is. There's a, uh, um, they're not large bathrooms, but they are um, used for all lunches. Um, and um, they are in pretty, um, they're pretty, uh, actually they're original. So they're pretty old and the majority of the cost, and we don't, we think 60,000 is actually a high placeholder. Um, but the most expensive piece of this is the, uh, the tile floors um, that need to be replaced. We're going to reuse the partitions, but we will be purchasing new fixtures uh, for the bathrooms, both sinks and toilets, um, and installing um, energy efficient hand dryers and faucet water faucets, um, which is part of um, our sustainability task force, the student led group that I work with did research last year on far as as far as um, equipment that you can use in in bathrooms in restrooms public restrooms uh, for energy efficiency and we are piggybacking on some of their research that they did along with our director to sort of pilot um, sort of what a energy uh, sustainability green uh, restroom of the future would look like as we uh, have to move forward and replace future uh, restrooms on off work campuses. So once we get better quote numbers for that, I'll pass that along to you. And like I said, we're hoping that that number will be lower than 60,000. Um, the, the last one we have is actually um, a placeholder for um, periodic equipment upgrades that we do at our wastewater treatment plant. We have a, um, we may be actually be removing that uh, because we've recently just connected with our um, service contractor for a wastewater treatment plant, which is Weston Sampson. And they actually think we are in good shape right now as far as smaller projects. Um, they are gonna be looking at those sort of a long range capital plan for us because the wastewater treatment plant is actually reaching its sort of 20, 20 year mark. Um, whereas where that may mean more substantial uh, capital investment in that. So I think we'll probably be pulling that one um, but then uh, be able to share probably in the coming months sort of their outlook for us for future years um, regarding that particular operation at the region. Thank you. Um, any questions from anyone? If not, Don, thank you very much. Thank you, Angie. I guess we're all squared away and you'll you'll be in touch if you get any new information to plug in, right? Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Okay. Um Peter Galatano, thank you very much for uh I had to laugh when your uh, ID line, title line on the uh, what you sent out to us said book. And then I looked at what you sent us and I realized it was a book. <laughs> you, did, you did a lot of work on that. Thank you very much. Did everybody get that, download it, look at it? Yeah, I'm pulling it up right now. Okay. And Peter Galatano, um, Heidi Doyle, who I see is with us, um, she had asked that she get copies of this forwarded door as it grows during our meetings. Of course. Okay. Um, shall we move on to uh, the DPW question? Or did you have anything you wanted to talk about with your book, Peter? Uh, no, the um, additional uh, second tab, the first tab has the summary and uh, 
compared to prior years, which Corey would be the only one that would know the difference, it has the two prior years to give a little history. Um, the second tab is the debt service. So just assuming a 10 year life and uh, treasury bill, um, T bill interest rates 4.5 as was last night. Um, what the debt service over the five years, uh, 30 periods would be and um, the cumulative cost uh, just to, to put some dollars into all of the uh, requests. And that's taking 50% of the regional schools who I did um, discount that for Sherburn's um, perspective. So that that's what that busy schedule is. Uh, and then the rest is the material provided with each of the asks. Great. It is a book. <clears throat> Incident incidentally, Sherburn share is 46% and change. Yeah, I, I did notice that, but I, yeah. I heard somewhere we were climbing. So it's conservative. It's it's yeah. conservative. Well, I got the number from so, Don. So <laughs> yep. I'm hoping it's, it's so, accurate. No, I saw that in the email. Yeah, so that was. So Peter, just to make sure I understand um, the spreadsheet. So if I'm looking at the summary tab uh, in column G, which is for fiscal year 2024, there's a total, which is row 58. So that's, that's what the ask is currently of all the projects that we, we have quotes for, is that right? Let me get there. So I see like DPW has town buildings, roads. So we're on 24G, yep, <clears throat> G is the current year. And so uh, two point Three two point two nine two four four two is the so total fifty eight is two million three hundred twenty seven thousand. Yes. All right, yep. so that, that's then, essentially all the projects. That's the request so far that you've summed up right there. Um, yes, because there's yeah no miscellaneous is in there yet. Yes, and then from and that, then you have I, the regional offset, which is. Um, row 59, is that right? Yes. Uh, so basically Dover is paying, you know, half of the regional cost. And then a little debt more is, of course. It. Right. Uh, and then row 60 is debt service calculation, which looks like it's the um, sum of rows 58 and 59. So that's why it goes down uh, because of the offset. I mean, but you would say debt service calculation. Are you referring to that as the amount put into debt service, but that's not the actual cost, right? Like that's not running it forward on how much we'd be paying interest on this. Where, where's that number? The next tab. So yeah, I, I it, it was getting late and I tried to fit everything on this page, but then I switched to another tab. So the second tab in black is uh, debt service. And here I just made it a little more dynamic where the useful life, you can change those uh, semi-annual interest payments, an interest rate of four and a half percent as a proxy. And then there you'll see the um, principal carried over from the first page. So if I'm looking at column C, uh, I have, that's the fiscal year 2024. I see the principal semi-annual payments of 83,747 at a 2.25 interest rate. Is that the going rate that you got from Heidi or yeah, somebody that's, else? Yeah, that's, um, that's half of a T-bill rate. Is, is that because what we would be expecting? Uh, it's a it's a good proxy on a, a, a muni, and we could change that. It's it's very dynamic. I think you can plug any number you want. It will recalculate. So as we get closer to a known number, right? And this is going to be over uh, a 
10, a 20 year or 10 year? Um, I just assume 10 and, and the life for each project will differ, but as a, as a proxy to get a um, cost, um, yes, that I used just 10 as an average. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So I, sorry, I just want to make sure I fully understand what this, the sheet is, is trying to show. And it no, like no, Anna and it, it's 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 great if um, you know there's there's a, a more intuitive way to present it. It's something I uh, threw together to get to an answer, meaning what's what's the cost to a taxpayer in any given year, given these five year projections. Um, and so uh, Peter, we, we haven't quick. had that. Is there any way um, you can share what you're talking about because other people are looking to look at it. It's in the sh um, chat room. Um, if if uh, I, I'm on my phone, but if someone- I could probably or, try. Sure. That'd be great. Let's see. Um, let me just make sure I'm grabbing the right document. I think it's this one. <coughs> So can everyone see the uh, the Excel spreadsheet? I hope is the right one. Yeah, it looks very, very familiar. Yes. All right. So what I was talking about beforehand, I apologize to everybody, was this uh, summary tab, which has uh, various columns of the fiscal years with some notes and uh, Peter had plugged in all of the sort of requests for the various years. And so this is for fiscal year 2024. And so far, the request that we have submissions for is $2,327,442 minus the offset. So it's looking at about 1.6, 1.7 million. So far in terms of what we have in and then <clears throat> what we were also then just talking about was the debt service which is this tab here that peter's um, created and so column c is for fiscal year 2024 so you see that principal amount that we we're just talking about the 1.6 1.7 million and then <clears throat> they would be for a period of so semi-annual payments so twice a year so 20 periods means 10 years this is the assumed interest rate that we'd be paying on the debt, uh, which sums up to a total amount of 395. Um, with that, so this is you know essentially the total cost of all these these projects here for the town would be two million dollars. Assuming Peter, that. before you get off this, where'd the principal number come from? Just from this spreadsheet? Um, the so, Wall Street Journal, uh, the T-bill rate of the Wall Street Journal on Monday, no, December 30th. No, no, no. The actual January principal 30th. number. The, how much so principal? Just, you're, where'd you come up with the actual debt? Uh, oh, it's from the John, first. You're, you're looking at this, right? You have it on your screen? Yeah, now I see it. Okay. Uh, so the, so it's 1.7. It's the okay. sum so, of, of this column here. All right. So it's not our actual principal. It's just the added for this particular year. Cumulative on top Correct. of the year. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. It's, it's just Thank looking you. at the ask. It's not looking at how big that uh, pile is already. Right, the, the ski slope, right. It, that's, you know, uh, a nice Right, that's in the past. We'll forget piece. about that. Well, <laughs> Which huh. keeps paying, which keeps. Uh, well, no, I asked because there's a lot of principal that's not on there that's not <clears throat> even an ask at the moment. Um, oh, ab absolutely. Ab ab but that, but that, I that wanted I think to gonna start get somewhere. Right. Okay. Okay. But at least we, we have and any, any uh, suggestions. And I'd, I'd love to lay over what we actually service currently. Because as as we begin to ramp up here, the other debt gets retired, which should be some offset. 
and where that point of inflection is, if any, um, would, is, is a nice to know. And, and I we have the all the to talk all night on that one. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's put everyone does, to sleep. Does Heidi have uh, a spreadsheet? I mean, I know we have that C slope, but I assume that there's numbers backing up that um, graph that we just have perhaps in an Excel spreadsheet format that uh, could be shared so we can merge some of the data or overlay, as, as Peter was saying, some of the data to understand how this would be, you know, on top of the, the current projections and, and current debt that we're servicing. Right. That, that graph, I actually had had um, different colors in there. So one of the graph things was the existing color, and then I'd already put in approximate place value of what last year's projection was going to be. So now this year, it looks like it's getting more fine tuned. We can go in here, but like I would take out the police cars and the fire chief cars, I would do that as free cash. So I would actually not be bonding 1.6 million. It would probably be less than that because um, we're trying to cut down um, the rates. I did check the latest ones have been threes to fours percent right now on what it's, we don't go by T-bills, we're going by what they actually are bidding on the bonds. So that's what the latest bond offerings have been. So that's why my estimates, I'm going at 4.5 because the rates are supposed to be going up again. Um, so I'm happy to work on this, but it's like, it'd be great if we can get these documents shared because I said I couldn't even get what you guys were looking at for your no, and, and I, I finished it last night and I, I knew it would be an interesting uh, project to, you know, have a model to plug yeah. in or at least to keep using. And, and again, I, I, I believe it's off of a model. I didn't come up with this. It's off a model from uh, DSL because uh, they have um, the debt Mac calculators. Right. Yeah, yes. Yes. Right. And right. so I, I, I think I mimicked it pretty well. Um, and so, you know, any tool we can use, it's it's, it's oh, yeah. my gift. It's my gift to advisory and the uh, budget committee here and uh, capital budget. So if we can keep using it and have it as a model to show the impact of capital or in as you mentioned what if we offset with free cash because we're exceeding you know the standard free cash guidance from the state then you'd lower your debt service yeah i was just trying to fill around and i realized that some of these um calculations the they don't carry over, so I'm just going to delete that column. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy to take a look at this, Peter, if you're sending it to me and um, work on it and see what some of the other projections look like. Sure. Yeah, now, do, you, do, you have, do you have a model that you use? Because I, I yeah. you know, just so, did this on the back of an envelope here. Yeah. No, I, I, I do have one, and, and I had one that I put that whole... Um, that mountain that you called it together, you know, that those ones I had projected out, you know, how many years on what was the articles that we were going to be borrowing, but some of them have changed now, like the HVAC, HVAC from the school has come in. So, but they, again, like I wouldn't be putting them in for next year because they said they're not gonna be using it till FY25. So, and I also wouldn't be long-term borrowing it right away. So we're just going to have band costs on them. So that's two years before you'd probably see that actually hit that debt mountain. So the timing, which is timing. Is yeah. Critical. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to give a little more time to have some stuff come off before we get hit with some of the roofs and the bigger numbers here. Heidi, do you remember just the sort of what the, debt service cost is on sort of an annual basis at the moment? Um, How much I, does the I, town pay and just paying interest? Uh, you happen to know off the top of your head. It's not, it's I, not a big deal. Yeah, my budget that I'm putting in for debt service right now is, um, for next year is about 1.7 something million. That's principal and interest, short-term borrowing, long-term borrowing. 
it'll probably go a little higher because we're trying to figure out with Sean's pickup truck if we're going to be getting it or not, if we have to pay that principal off. It's close to 1.8 million. Okay. And what is the total town budget then? Like what percentage of the total town budget does that represent? It's um, probably 5%. Made five point something percent. Yeah, thirty million is usually, I think, where we were last year. Heidi, is the is the interest on the excluded debt to, uh, two and a half exempt? Uh, I think you're looking at only principal. Right, so the principal is exempt, but the, the interest is not, Interest right? is not, correct. That's what I think it is. I'll have to go double check with our calculations, but I think it's... So by leaving leaving extra levy, we oh. actually hurt ourselves twice by borrowing money and then having to pay the interest within the levy and the principal outside the levy. It hurts us. Well, we don't pay... You're not paying on the excluded debt because um, it's two different formulas to, to do the tax rate and they want to you want to be at a tax rate the levy limit is a number used to help where we can set our tax rate that doesn't translate to what we're actually paying in our budget and debt service it's only used a number to judge where your tax rate is going to be set against it's not you're paying not paying any extra money on whether it's excluded or not excluded debt no but the conversation for tomorrow and the rest of the year yeah. about leaving extra limit when you borrow money and leave extra levy limit, you pay interest on the borrowed money instead of taxing the, the taxpayers. So for the next 20 years, 10 years, you pay interest, which ends up under the levy limit, but the principal was outside the levy limit. So you left money on the table just for the sake of paying interest on the, on the money on the table. Okay, I'll have to follow up. Right? I know what you're, you're talking about, whether it's in the operating or in the capital side. Yeah, on taxes, so I'll well, have to... Yeah, it, I'd it's have to in many about things. It. Like we pay free cash, and then we, we we still leave money on the table. We don't we don't hit the levy limit ceiling. We right. leave it on the table, and then we borrow money and and make ourselves feel good. But it still hits the tax rate, and then we pay interest on it. And when it was one point two percent interest, that was great. But four and a half percent interest that hurts. Uh, so, Sean, yeah, I don't think I think there's still we, two, we don't two pay interest arguments. on the levy. Um. Yeah, I got to double check that. Well. But Home the levy has do, nothing to do nothing to do with our tax rate. The levy limit's not what or ha, doesn't have anything to do with what we get taxed on. It's oh, only it what we're allowed to tax does. up to. If we don't, if we don't hit the levy limit, and then we borrow money, we still get taxed on it. We just didn't use the limit. So, so you advocate, to, Sean, just so that I understand, you're advocating to to sprint towards the levy limit and increase the taxes as much as we can. No. I, what I'm saying is the dance that Sherman likes to play, It say you leave a million dollars under the levy limit and then you borrow a million dollars. You pay interest on the million dollars, right? Next year, it hits the levy limit. And for the next 20 years, the million the, the interest on that principal is not outside of the 2.5%. The principal is. But you left, you left the money that was under the limit that you could have used but, but so, so if you so do that it, if million you do dollars, that 10 times. No, but it, that it, million it, dollars would hit the taxes in the year that you incur the million dollars versus it would have been. borrowing it you, or borrowing you it, it within. You, you borrowed it instead of paying for it. Right, so you, right. You, so you so pretended a million you dollars, pay, you like it, a million dollars is huge in terms of the tax individual year tax rate. That's how much like is it? six. It's uh, how, how far four, four four are we point right now. Four. Um, that's a good question. Sean, I'm going to have to think that one through because I'm not sure. Everybody I'm not following should, it. Everybody yeah. should think it through. I'm not yeah. advocating for hitting the two and a half limit. I'm just saying when you leave, when, when you don't hit the ceiling, you left money on the table. I'm not, and listen, I'm a taxpayer in Sherman and my bill went up too. 
I'm not saying everyone's bills should go up. I'm saying we're paying mm -hmm. interest instead of buying things. So we, uh, we need to think about that every year because when you leave extra limit, you pay the interest instead of the homeowners paying the interest. It's one or the other. So there's certain things we should probably think about buying rather than financing. That's, that's our struggle. Yeah, that's why I got to, yeah, I got to sit and down. It, and it, 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 we never get it back. Every time we borrow, we never get it back. We just stack, yeah. we stack it on the, on the outside of the limit and we still tax ourselves, right? We're still doing it to ourselves, but we're adding four and a half percent now to every project. Well, it's our, operating our, our, in capital, though. You, you ha, there's a there's a the clear distinction between the operating budget that you 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 spend it or you lose it, and and yes, if things fall into that category, and it's not greater than twenty five thousand or a useful life of five years, and the benefits don't accrue to future generations or future life, then you know it's a, eligible for capital. But if you're, you know sticking everything in the operating budget that's what we well, struggle with each year because that directly because then you're financing it by taxes yeah but we're not we're nowhere near sticking everything in the operating budget right we're borrowing a couple hundred thousand dollars every year right now to fix the roads to catch back up so it's not really in the operating budget. the operating budget's kind of a joke if you're going to borrow two hundred thousand dollars every well, single I would, year, I would, I would object. Away. I would object because we hardly That's laugh right. at these these meetings. No, but, <laughs> but but for every year in the past, do you wish twenty years ago they didn't leave money on the table? Well, twenty years ago they were actually having operating. They were probably having two and a half overrides, but they did have overrides. Yeah, right. It wasn't twenty though. It was about well, it was close to it actually. So, um, Sean, I I think so, you're. Your point is, if, if I can summarize it real quick, is essentially that there are costs that are sort of annual costs that are more like maintenance costs that we are putting into the capital budget, which arguably could go into the operating. And by keeping them in operating, we wouldn't be borrowing the money to pay for them. And that has some tax implications in terms of what the rate is going forward. Yeah. So I, I think that as a committee, we, we do need to look at what the long-term cost to the town is of putting some of these projects that, you know, could be characterized very fairly as sort of maintenance operating. You know, it's going to happen every single year. So it's not like it's a one-time thing or an unusual event that is really a capital project. And, you know, look, I, I, I think where that's part of our our mission uh, is to really evaluate these and see what's the fiscally, you know, most prudent thing to do for the town. And so we, we, we hear you and, and we're, we're, we're going to be thinking about that and talking about that. I think that'd be great because I was running some scenarios on if we did 250 roads, 250 stormwater, 250 uh, buildings every year, which kind of has been what the pattern we're getting into the interest rate, what you start doing. So stormwater, we can only borrow for five years. So in five years, you've now maxed that, you're carrying five years worth each time of interest on that one. Uh, Rhodes was uh, 50, 10 years, no, 15 years for Rhodes. And that, I, so at, at, at year 15, we're maxing, we're carrying 15 years worth of interest on each one going forward. And, and then the other one's 10 years. And when each one maxes out where we've stacked up this consecutively each year, came out to $199,000 in interest, just on assuming a flat level debt, 4.5% interest on these different ones, which 199,000 in interest charges for those projects is, you know, 15 cents on the tax rate. It, it's a significant amount. So that's where I think Sean was saying too, we've got to look, is that what we want to carry in capital where we are charging that extra tax directly to the taxpayers? Um, you know, it's surprising how quick it adds up. And yes, the interest rates can go up or down. I'm just using that as just to put it out there to think about, is that one strategy? Other towns have set up other um, building stabilization funds and things that you can fund and then use. So you're not always using debt and debt just becomes for bigger projects, you know, more one-time thing projects as opposed to every year projects. So I think it's a, like, 
Peter Moore, as you were just saying, I think this is a really good time to start looking about this going forward. And what do we, where do we want to look in the future with some different options? And, and to that point, Heidi, if you can provide us some of the data that you have, we can try to build out some models so that you know we we can look at almost like a project by project and see this is what the lifetime cost of the project is going to be. You know, these these are the realistic rates that we would get at the moment if we were to bond it. Um, yeah. Does it make sense for the town to bond this project versus treat it as an operating? And look, there's it's multi-factored and multifaceted. Um, right. But the the more data that we have, the more informed decision we can make. So we, we appreciate yeah. anything you can give us, Heidi, on that front. Um, sure. and, and Sean, thank you for sharing your perspective. And um, I think we probably need um, a little bit more data. And then um, just, I know Peter has talked about in the past sort of advisories view on this and that, you know, you don't want to necessarily stick the taxpayers with you know, one big, you know, bill at one time, you're sort of spreading the project out over the lifetime of it. And, and I don't know if there's, you know, more conversations we should be having with, with advisory just on, you know, what this year is looking like and, and whether or not there is a little bit of, of room to put any of these projects on, on an operating basis, or if that's prudent or, or makes sense, given that rates are going up. But you know, these, these are important conversations. I appreciate everybody uh, sharing their views. Well, and Peter, I will share this with you and, and our esteemed chairman, <laughs> uh, Professor Emeritus at Wellesley um, projects an override for next year. And so that's interesting. Do you know what the I mean, as, as he projected out what the percentage above two and a half percent are we going towards or? Um, probably, I have to look closer at his, his five-year projection, um, but that maybe was a teaser to get me to look at it, to get everyone to look at it and pay attention <laughs> I, I, and say, you know, I, oh I, boy. But yeah, then again, you know, as a citizen next year, I just admire those well, struggling with it. At, at some point, when inflation is three times two and a half percent, then that's there's there's only so much you can do, right? Right, and that we're kind of hitting that point. You know, if inflation has surpassed the two and a half percent, and you can do that for a couple of years, and we're kind of at that point. Where you got to do something, and. We'll let Dan handle that. I think this is just to kind of be a wake up call and get everyone to say, all right, what other options do we have? You know, these are a good time to look at what potential things we could do. No, and he, he did a great job um, modeling it, it out and um, mm -hmm. coming up with those um, uh, forecasts, which we haven't done that well and, and being inspired by the, the dead mountain and what we're being asked to look at. Uh, over the next five years from a capital perspective, you know, kind of marry those two together. And, and I got to assume that there's also the uh, assessment values that have gone up. Um, you know, I think the pandemic was good for property values, and I'm not sure if the assessor's office is um, how that's working in terms of, is it going up with inflation too? And, and so therefore, property taxes should be going up with inflation to, to meet that challenge as opposed to having to raise the rate. So that, that's another part of the multifaceted analysis, which yes. I'm sure uh, Dan has, has some thoughts on perhaps. Yeah, he, he did. It certainly is a, a facet. And I'd like this past year with the property values went up 12%. Next year, Dan is pro, pro, projecting 6%. And then after that, he kind of keeps it flat. And so, you know, you don't know if that's accurate. It's a projection. So, you know, if it's at 6% and our 6% is our increase in budget, then we're pretty flat. But if it goes down or up, then it, it changes. Yes, and we advocate additions on everyone's home <laughs> so that that can help. <clears throat> 
Well, are you, you going know, to get that, conservation uh, and, and health board of health to work with us on doing those? <laughs> just build up, just build up. That's all. Attic space, no bedrooms. <laughs> there must be a height restriction rule somewhere. <laughs> oh. Okay. Shall mm. we look at um, Sean? You're still here, right? Or did he leave? Yeah, he's here. I am. Um, before we get into that, uh, Deb, could you tell me how much is left in Sean's town buildings budget? Uh, as uh, yeah, 176,000. What is it? Yeah, I believe it's 176,000. 170, yeah, 179. I just updated it for the last warrant on Thursday, so it's 179,000. Okay, and is there anything encumbered right now, or is it 179 is the total? Um, that is actually cash outlay. I don't know, Sean, if you've spent any of that. We just haven't seen any of the invoices yet or not. I, I, I don't see that that piece. Oh, okay. yeah, there's a, the, so that's why I highlighted the definite in blues. Um, the garage doors are getting installed next week. So there's 54 and change um, on that first project that'll be built you know, next week or, you know, within the next month. The uh, police station gutters, that went out to bid, that was awarded. That's not the entire project, but the the bulk, the, the, the bulk of it is. 25,000 is out to, um, on contract. So that's within the next few months. And then we have to do some restoration work in the spring on the, on the brick that's almost destroyed. So th those are both committed. Okay, so that that would come out of the 178. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's some other repairs uh, throughout the list that are all coming out of the 178. Then the 178, you know, anything that's not there is going to roll over. Uh, but in reality, in the next in the next month, um, over about a hundred is going to be gone in the next couple months. Um, okay. Did, my second question is the, the uh, list that you gave us of the not blue. <laughs> um, are those, did you list those in order of priority? No. Um, that, that was one of the requests um, that you do it in order of priority can off the top of your head, what's your priority of the remainders? Uh, dollar value in ascending order, right, Sean? No, I'm not doing that. Um, if, if, if Peter, if you wanna show the, the uh, 2024 DPW building projects, um, I did put it in a spreadsheet. The uh, PDF was converted to a spreadsheet and I did uh, color the blue if, if you're still sharing. Yeah, let me. Um, so it's like, it's like the second. A lot of dark, windows open at the moment. I know, especially in this book. Uh, it's like the second dark blue DPW tab. All right. So. This one? Yep. This That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. So the PDF's on one side and then it's spreadsheet on the other side. And okay. the uh, red, which is totaled at the bottom on line 27, uh, the low end and the high end. And yeah. maybe this will help help with the discussion. Yeah. So the, the red items are not in order of priority. What is your priority? If you had to pick the top five, what are they? Well, the, some of these things don't all happen as one project. It, it, it doesn't work that way. Um, the, uh, well, uh, excuse the, me, I, well, I, the, I, the, the town I, hall roof, the town hall roof, I, you know, I, I'd like it to happen this construction season along with, along with the insulation because they'll hopefully happen together. 
we may or may not do the HVAC upgrades, but but what what doesn't get captured in a, in a simple document, and in a in in a single meeting or two is we hope to do some upgrades on the HVAC. That's a combination of some probably some green communities grants and some money. Um, that that won't shake out till it shakes out, um, because we have green communities money that's going to go towards the attic insulation. Um, we just don't have the exact number on it yet. Okay. And, Sean, and yeah, I I also went back and looked at last year um, in our report as to what the town appropriated for at town meeting. And they appropriated for fire station kitchen and possible air handler replacement. They appropriated for the tight tank replacement. They appropriated for town campus improvements partially funded by ARPA. And they uh, appropriated for the police station prisoner cell plumbing fixtures. Now I assume that all four of those things um, haven't happened. And if they haven't, I asking what happened to the money that was appropriated for them? But again, they, it wasn't appropriated for those specific items, nor is it being appropriated for those specific items now. Those numbers were taken originally from the on-site insight report. So it's, it's not a specific number a lot of these are public bid projects. So it's not like I know the number four years ahead of, in advance. They're predicted numbers that come from the on-site insight. And they and they still frankly are. So I've, I've carefully said each year, you're not specifically funding a set of specific projects that's gonna happen in that fiscal year. So they're still on the list. They're still remaining to be done. That's why I gave you an update to the list. The police station prisoner cells have not been upgraded. In fact, one of them's out of service right now. I'm working with the police chief on whether or not we want to spend a significant amount of money upgrading them. Um, the money's not gone. It just hasn't been spent on them. A lot of money got spent on the town hall space utilization. Um, a lot of money got spent so, on the campus paving, et cetera. So, so we didn't so have I'm, we didn't I'm have new. a specific number on those. That those things got got done. So, Sean, I'm I'm relatively new here and and I'll just tell you what my thoughts are on moving forward, not about what happened in the past, but at least moving forward is that we're we're recommending specific allocations of money for specific projects. And not yeah, just not. through general fund. Well, we won't vote to approve something or recommend something. We can't approve, right? We're just recommending. Well, we wouldn't recommend a pot of money for a particular project unless we think it's going to go for that project. Exactly. And that's not what you're doing. You're not approving a specific project. <laughs> you're approving well, a specific group, a list of projects. Right, we, we, we don't recommend, we, we don't approve, we just recommend, but if, if, at least in my view, and I can't speak for the, the majority, I'm just a minority here, but I would, I would recommend the allocation of money for a particular project, and I won't vote for just a pot of money for just anything. Because on at the town meeting, we we have we ask or suggest to the voters that raise these funds for town buildings, and we do give eligible projects. And so, even if it takes ten years, that money still earmarked per the vote of the town meeting as recorded by the town clerk for what was recommended. So I, I think you're okay, Sean, by you know, committing to projects, even if it takes 10 years to do, because uh, Deb did give a, a great spreadsheet that had all of the um, 
uh, articles, what they were for, and how much is left. So it's it's recorded. And even if um, I'm I'm sorry, even if we don't get to them, it's still recorded that that uh, fire station bathroom will be done for fifty grand or whatever it was, the fire station. Right? Is that is that accurate? Yeah, somewhat accurate. Um, again, so I think these, we can do these, both. These, we can, these, we are can... All given as, these are given as estimates to justify money towards the facilities. We, we, we don't go to town meeting for each individual facilities project. If we do, this committee needs to have a lot of meetings with advisory and discuss where all that money is going. Because advisory committee isn't giving enough money for the maintenance. So, you know, there's that struggle. Well, let's separate these things. Operation from capital. Capital is voted upon project specific and it's earmarked and recorded and accounted for according to what the article at town meeting was voted upon. And that lasts forever. So if if the town hall HV AC upgrades don't get done, we know we voted on it for a certain amount. Now that that cost could escalate, but then it would be another ask because it doubled in 10 years. Um, and, and that's operations aside. Yes, you may have been strangled by the operations because we were trying to keep the tax rate under $30 per thousand. But I, I think we, we can have our cake and eat it too here by recommending that the town hall HV AC gets upgraded. The town votes on it, the money's set aside and then when they come in in two years, or I'll sell you seven from the high school for a lot cheaper than what you want, um, what you're asking for, it's completed. Right. I mean, the biggest problem has been we don't, the projects don't fall directly in a fiscal year. So the tracking, but, but, the tracking but, overlaps fiscal year or or different capital asks. And in the way it's accounted for, that's fine because you right. can wait ten years and the money's still there. Right. For instance, we said, you know, I ordered the garage doors for the fire station over a year ago. They were on the capital ask over a year ago. They're going to be delivered and installed next week. So. If you were to reconcile, I'm assuming, I think, I don't have it in front of me. I think two years ago, ask, it was there. It's still been on the list. Well, it's well, going to come off and it's going to come out. 190000 from uh, town buildings um, in, in the, the, the accounting yeah, I, that Deb gave me. Yeah. Peter. In FY23, right? Yeah. Last year. Yes. Let, let me read what the report that we made that was voted on at town meeting. It said, this request is for the following on-site insight recommended in other projects, though not all of these will be completed this year given disruptions in the construction industry. So we have that in there. Colon, one, replacement of fire station garage doors estimated at 60,000. Now, I'm assuming that you're telling us that you also had 60,000 appropriated from the year before. Now, are the garage doors actually costing 120,000? No, I didn't say that at all. It's, it's still 60,000, whether it was the last, the year before or this year. Yeah, but we raised- It was just new, on the list. We raised new money last year for the garage doors. Then we had the gutters and the work at the police station. Then fire station kitchen and possible air handler replacement, 50 to 70,000, which appears on this year's list, but it was also appropriated for last year. 
fire department and DPW garage tight tank, town hall roof repair, um, which I assume is different from what you're saying on the roof thing this year. Um, let's see here. Police station prisoner cell, specialized plumbing fixtures estimated at 50,000. Um, that's also on this year's list. It's, and then it said the committee voted to recommend favorable action on the appropriation of $190,000. But the expectation of the voter was that they were voting to fund these items. So Deb, here's a question. Do, and, and I know you sent me the um, account numbers um, and how they were funded that spreadsheet, thank you, which was very yes. helpful. And I didn't send it around because with the book, I thought that would be too much. Do we align um, an invoice for uh, the garage doors with a town vote and article? No. When, when... No, I, like what that spreadsheet I give you, that's how I align it. So last year when we had $190,000 what we put in accounting is just ATM 22 for uh, town buildings for $190,000. If and you know, so when we spend that down, there's, there's no control or oversight on the vote for the 190,000 and what the invoices that uh, decrement that 190,000. N not at my level, no. All right, is Jeremy on? Let's put it on his level. <laughs> you know no. that, yeah, that is that. As as long as I've been here, that's not how it. You know, it's it's worked. Okay, I, so that's I that's, think that's, it, that's if, a system of control uh, issue because if the voters vote on specific things, we we have to have the oversight where the disbursement of that money goes towards what was voted for. Again, that's I think that's, not, that's if, if, if anyone indicated to the voters that that's exactly the dollar amounts that were voted for, they indicated wrong. Different issue. No, different issue, different issue. But no, a garage door is a garage issue. door. Not, yes, my a garage door is a garage door, Peter. Sean, no matter what it costs. So if you, if you never spend if you absorb all the money and you never buy a garage door there is a disconnect between the vote and the expenditure well then and that's then that's bad government the voters wrong i'm sorry but my spreadsheet says estimate 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 many of these things go out to public bid and don't even remotely look like what the on-site insight report said they were going to be four years ago that's how it's always been presented to the capital budget. That's how it's been presented and will be tomorrow night presented to the advisory committee. I'm sorry if there's a disconnect on this committee, but those dollar amounts are estimates. It's not, a, it's not about the dollar amount. It could it's be very everything could be $1 allocations. as long as it's a project. If the yeah. projects are ignored, then we're doing a disservice to the government. No, they're not uh, ignored. The, the if citizens. the projects roll to the next year, then they roll to the next year. That's, That's how everyone has understood it up until now. Everyone has and understood we're, this we're list. We're saying the same thing. We're saying the same thing. But that, does that list equal $350,000 in my estimate? It does not. I couldn't possibly fund all those projects this year. I expect that we'll have grants that come through, and I expect that we'll have some other funding, maybe some earmarks. We got earmarks for some of the, the town hall stuff. We got earmarks for some of the digital – The um, the space and, and, and digitizing. So the projects got funded from other sources, but the projects still happen. The projects don't happen at all if we don't fund them. So I'm sorry but, if there's a, a little confusion on your end, but this is how we've been doing it since 2017. Well, it, well we have to stop doing it this yeah. way then. If that's well, the way I we're doing it, we have to stop. We have to stop. I couldn't agree more. Because I an if a project a is voted ago. on, if a project is voted on, even though the cost may be unknown, but an estimate, those voted dollars and that project have to be seen to, to completion. 
even if it's totally funded by a grant, then that I guess that frees up that money and it goes back into the general fund. So if someone else paid for the doors and it was voted last year for 50,000, 50,000 of your AP, all town meeting dollars set aside should go back to the general fund because the project was completed, the funds weren't needed, and they go back into the general fund. Well, then no, they'd never go back to the general fund if it was borrowed money. They would just not be borrowed. That's incorrect. <laughs> but the, 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 the vote from a couple of years ago, and I believe last year, specifically cited the on-site insight report. And if we were to fund the on-site insight report from the first year, it was several million dollars. So I don't think we wanted to do that. We specifically <clears throat> cited it and we said various projects. So I, I think one of the so things you that guys have help. asked me for multi, you guys have asked me for more and more detail each year, and I can't exactly give you more and more detail. We're 18 months to, to, to almost 20 months out on some of these projects. So I think it's fine. Sean, going. that doesn't matter. It's time. It's time. It's not time bound. The, the project can happen after we retire. It's what's voted on and follow the dollars, even though the dollars may be a bad estimate. But okay. by recycling these projects, I think is what we have the problem with is if we keep seeing the garage doors done three years in a row, it, it raises questions. Well, that's why I highlighted them. Maybe we're talking about the same thing. The garage doors are getting done next week. If I could have had them done a year ago, I would have loved to have. I ordered them a year ago. Oh. Right? And I, but said, they were voted and we, last I basically year. sat on the money. And in a couple of weeks, the next warrant, they're gonna, it's going to be gone. Is that not uh -huh. clear? So like the 60000 will I, be gone in, a, in the next warrant. Next time you see the spreadsheet. The 40,000 is more right. than half under contract right now. We put it out to public bid. We got a very favorable bid. If I put it out a year ago, I don't even know that it would have been 40. It would have probably been more than that. But you disregarded the vote last year. I no, think I didn't is... disregard a vote last year. What are you talking about? I told you last you're year. You're recycling I'm not put the police station... projects. You're recycling projects that are already paid for. Oh, that, or, that's ridiculous. I'm not recycling anything. I put it on the list as it's going to get paid this fiscal year. You're asking me in January and December to 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 put a spreadsheet together. I did. This fiscal money. But you just be you just copied over last year. year's. You copied over last year's spreadsheet. The projects didn't Which, get finished. Have you tried to order? But they anything? were they were funded. Track, they were funded and voted on. In 2022, on. it's not in yet. Or 2021. But they were voted on. That's the point we're making. They were already voted on. Okay. Do you want me to take them off the list? Yes. Because well, you would have. They were already me, on the list last year. No shit. But you would have asked me. You would have asked Deb <laughs> to reconcile the number. Where's the hundred eighty thousand going? So I gave you the where the hundred eighty thousand is going. I highlighted it. Yeah. Well, well, I. I I think we have to do a better job of reconciling the projects to the vote. <clears throat> Where's Jeremy? Is he on here? No, He's not on here. no, oh, but I, I, I agree with you, Peter. I mean, it can be the same vote, but within that vote, a, a separate sp spreadsheet could be, you know, uh, made that says, okay, well, of the of the fire station garage doors, sixty thousand dollars is still sitting out there. So of that one hundred and seventy nine thousand that Sean has sitting right here, sixty thousand dollars is you know basically earmarked for the fire station garage doors. So next year, Sean, when you would go to put your you know uh, your ask list for next year, you wouldn't include fire station garage doors because we've already funded that. So I think that's where the confusion is. It's it's just that the list shows the same thing. So it, some people may interpret it that we're funding it over and over and over again. And Sean, you're just thinking that it's still on the list because we actually haven't spent it. And I, if thought you look, you wanted to, I thought you wanted to see what was in process booked against the money that was sitting there. If I didn't put that, you would have said reconcile the 180,000. So that's what I did. Sean, what the, we asked for, and, and I appreciate that you told us what is underway, the fire, the garage doors and the police station. 
But when we asked for your list of new projects, we were, or I shouldn't say we, I was quite surprised to see that on the list of new projects that you are apparently asking us to fund in the 250,000, the quarter million dollars that you're looking for above the on-site insight plan is, and of the things that are on your list, four of them are things that have already been funded. It just hasn't been spent yet. And that's what I'm having a difficult time swallowing. That's $190,000. Um, and I, I, I really have a lot of trouble going to the voter and saying, please appropriate $350,000, $190,000 of which, by the way, has already been appropriated, but we're doing it again. I understand their estimates. I know that it's going to change when the bill comes. I mean, we all know that. I also understand your problem that you straddle two fiscal years because your most productive seasons are between, I don't know, March and October, I guess. I understand all that, but I don't understand the recycling of the items. Well, I, I take objection to you using even using that, that phrase, so I'm, I'm not gonna discuss it any further. It's, it's not a recycling so, uh, of any items. It's it's the way the town is set up that we're going to do this. It's not recycling anything. We didn't. Well, the we town's going to change. We if didn't. that's the way we do it, the town has to change. Okay, I I completely agree. I brought an article three years ago to town meeting. Well, I didn't bring it to town meeting. I brought it to the advisory. You were on that committee. You shot it down definitively. So next year, I I'm I'm pretty sure the town's going to change. If you don't want to fund the capital projects. So be it, but I, I, I'm sorry. No, I thought I brought what you asked me to bring. I, 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 I'm not I think be insulted. we may I'm need not, a forensic accountant to come in and say ahead. what bring was on. voted on, what was spent, and do they match? I, and nobody's arguing about the validity of the things that are on this list. I mean, I, I personally, I speak for myself, think that they probably all need to be done. I'm not, I'm not disputing that. I'm talking about the way the funding is being handled it's not being handled well i brought this every year said i don't like it the way it's being handled i tried to fix it jeremy has some ideas that align with the way i tried to fix it Heidi has some ideas i i'm not going to continue to get raked over the coals there's a bunch of projects that need to get done we should probably figure out how to fund them it, I, it mm -hmm. this is so not it, it, this shouldn't be born on my shoulders. I'm sorry. This is a very difficult conversation. I thought I gave you what you asked for. There's a bunch of projects that are in, in, in process. It's been a very difficult, very difficult couple of years to go through COVID and try to get some of these projects done. I'm doing the best I can. Okay. I didn't set this process up. I don't agree with the way the process is done. I don't agree with the way advisory handles the operating budget. I've been on the select board. I've been in the role I'm in. I don't agree with most of the finances and the way they're being done. So I, it's not fair to just attack me, okay? That's all I have to say. So I think at least going forward, one of the things that would be helpful is, I, I think, Sean, you, you've tried to make things efficient by bringing one sort of warrant article, that DPW to the town, et cetera. Um, so there's only one thing that they're voting on. I think that going forward, every single project will have to be just a different warrant article. And we will say the town will vote to allocate X amount of dollars for the town hall roof replacement, X amount of dollars for the town hall HVAC upgrades, X amount of dollars. And if it turns out that these estimates are too low, then it's unfortunately going to be coming back to the town and asking for additional money to, to do the project. But there's going to be a sort of one project and an allocation of money that's an ask for the town, at least for capital budget. Now, I'm not talking about operating budget, but maybe that would at least be easier on the back end accounting if the allocation is very clear 
X amount of dollars for this project. Peter, I, I understand what you're saying. And from an accounting standpoint, that would be the, the simplest route to go. But like from Sean's point of view, that might not be the, the best operational mode, just because if he's in the middle of it and he runs out of money, then you can't just stop the project in the middle of, you know, of what's being done, waiting for the next town meeting to vote. So that was the beauty of kind of doing things in a lump sum manner. And even if it came under budget, then that money would sit there until the next town meeting where we'd have to vote to rescind that money back into the pot. So from a practical standpoint, this is probably the best way to do it. What I think we're lacking and it's and it's it could easily be done in in the finance office is just creating another uh, another spreadsheet, you know, something that is on my you know, to-do list is purchase orders, which we, we don't use a purchase order system. That could that could definitely help with this kind of situation. But I, I think that just to vote on a specific dollar amount might really hinder Sean's work. Well, I was thinking, well, I, I Deb, think... that was a good, good point. I was thinking is you, you have the, um, uh, the chart of accounts and just create another account one account for each project. Yes, so I, I this town meeting has 10 projects, there's 10 accounts with $10 amounts. And I, I see the point that if you run out of funds, but that happens within all budget. On the operating side, if if you overspend but um, but by by law you flush. But oh, by by law, you can't overspend. Like in the operating budget, you can't overspend um, until you get to within the last two years of the season. Otherwise, you have to do a reserve fund transfer. So you can't. It, municipal accounting doesn't allow you to overspend until you get to that point. Yeah, but I mean, isn't that's that a fine. risk for every single project, a uh, capital budget project? But I'm it's so going to come, they'll be more expensive and the, they're just going to have to wait to install those air handlers until the next year. Uh, that that hasn't happened since I've been here. That, that, you know, that they have underfunded a project that it's had to stop in the middle of the project. So perhaps that isn't that significant of a risk. I'm sorry, say that again? Well, if it's never happened before, then it's not well, that's likely because, to happen tomorrow. Well, that's because in, like in for Sean's budgets, we don't specify by that, by the, you know, the, the Sean's budgets are the budgets where that could happen the most, like buying a police cruiser or buying a fire vehicle, though you get all estimates for those individual items. So that's why it hasn't happened. But some of these items where, as Sean stated, where they're not always readily available or they take more time, by doing it the way he's doing it, it allows him some flexibility to say, okay, well, the fire, you know, the fire station garage doors, I want to order them, but they're not going to be in for another year and a half. So now I have $60,000 that I can use this year on a different project. But if you voted by project, then it's all of a sudden $60,000 is gonna sit there until you can get those garage doors done. I, I think that's essentially what the town votes for though. Like it's gonna to go to the projects that have been identified and nothing just, not just a slush fund for- Well, it's, it's going to and, numerous, numerous, it's not a slush fund, it's numerous projects. I mean, but I thought, I thought you said, Deb, that there's no actual fiscal oversight on how the money's being spent. Well, I mean, I, 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 on each individual project. So let's say right now, Sean has spent, um, you know, out of the $190,000 from that last article, he spent $10,000. I personally don't know. I mean, I can go and look and see what those invoices are. 
Those invoices have been approved by Sean, and he said that they belong to this article. And as the department head, I believe he spent those that $10,000 and he put it to that article. He probably can go back and look at all those invoices and see if it went to the fire station garage door, if it went to the fire station kitchen. I don't keep track of that. I, I could, it's not something that has ever been done in our department before, but it, it could be done. It, it wouldn't be difficult to do, it just hasn't been done. And when you said there, there's definitely fiscal oversight that the, the article itself is not being overspent. But an individual project within the article may be overspent as far as I know. So this approach may tend to have more conservative or contingencies built into every project as, 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 as most projects do have if you were building a library, say. Um, but it, it, I don't know, it, it just makes sense. I understand the amorphous pot of money to be spent each year but it has to, in my humble opinion, align with what we're asking for the town or recommending the town to vote for. Peter, how many projects were on the on-site insight report for 2024? Do you think it was five? 37, 37. Okay. All right, so set, let's say- Pick five though, month, pick five. Let's say ne next month, the fire inspector comes out they, they go to test the fire pumps. The fire pump's dead at town hall. It's going to be $24,000 to fix it. You think I should put that in the operating budget? Yes. Of course not. Of mm -hmm. course not. It well, should go in the capital. It should go in the capital budget. Did town meeting appropriate money for that? Yes. Town meeting absolutely appropriated money for that because they appropriated money based on the on-site insight report. And that's a ten. That's more than a ten-year life. It's more than ten thousand dollars. Of course, I should capitalize a fire pump for the town hall. Is it on my list? No. It's but, not. Then it shouldn't be spent. It's not a capital budget item. All right. Sure. Then you don't understand how we've been doing this for the past five years. I'm sorry. I I, I don't. I, do, I, I don't, don't have operating expenses. I do not have operating expenses to fix to to cover that. And the advisory well, committee then, has known that. And they pushed it off on the capital expenditures. So you should probably go to their meeting a, tomorrow night and discuss it with them. That's a structural problem. And I'm, I apologize if you get caught in, in the, the middle of it, but you can't allocate money on a capital budget that hasn't been approved by the town. I disagree. It was approved by the town. Look at the prior meeting. Look at the prior town meeting votes. It was based they look on at, the on-site. I mean, look, I'm a town, I've been to the town meeting. I look specifically at each project that's articulated in the warrants to say, yes, I want to spend money for those projects, not just anything, you know, we need to spend money for the next year. They didn't, they didn't that, reference that's the on-site That's how the voters report. work. Yeah. Every year yeah, it's referenced the, the on-site insight report. And the on-site insight, insight report that. is always- it's not, as, it's not in the warrant. Right, it's the actual report of like these are the town needs. That's not. It doesn't say anything in this report we can spend money on. Do you have last year's warrant in front of you? I do. Uh, read it. Someone read it. It's because we we do broader categories. I'm I'm reading. Well, the article itself is where's the capital article. Article 11, um, 11 to see, let's see, it says, um, let's see. It says you want to it, the motion or the advisory committee report. Both. And okay. the capital budget report. 
Okay, the um, advisory committee report says, capital improvements to town buildings are based on a 20 year plan commissioned by the town in 2016 and updated in 2021. And this item would provide funding to continue maintaining built town building as specified in this plan. The sequencing of projects remains open given supply constraints and current pricing in the construction industry. That said, projects coming up next, not all of which will be undertaken in the coming year, include the replacement of fire station garage doors and trim, gutters and restoration work at the police station, work on the fire station kitchen, replacement of tight tanks at the fire department and DPW, work on town hall, including the roof space utilization improvements and new IT wiring, improvements to the town campus, guardrails, parking and safety related and replacement of plumbing fixtures in prisoner cells in the police station. Um, that was the advisory committee. So if so, I can interrupt you, which, which part of that is recycling of, of articles? I'm sorry, that was pretty insulting the way you guys presented that. That fits exactly into what I presented back to you tonight. The fire well, that, station garage doors are gonna get done in the next couple of weeks in this fiscal year's money. The gutters are gonna get done in the next couple of weeks in this fiscal year's money. The town campus, I highlighted in green as it, most of it was done. So I'll accept your apology, Peter, both of you. But that, that fits within the guidelines of what was voted last year. Okay. What was voted last year that reappears, not in your blue list, but in your new list of things, um, fire station kitchen and possible air handler replacement. Exactly. So go back and read the second sentence of what you read. May or may not happen this fiscal year. It's, I think if you were a voter, you would understand that it may not happen this fiscal year, it may happen next fiscal year, but you're being asked to appropriate money to allow it to happen whenever it does. And when it reappears on this year's list, it will appear as though the voters are being asked to appropriate money for the kitchen and air handler replacement, if it happens this year or next year or the year after, but the voters are being asked to appropriate money the second time for it. That, that's where that came from. That, that's what I'm concerned about. I think we've got two issues here. We've got a political issue about what the voters at town meeting believe they have voted for and are willing to vote for again. And then we have an issue about some specific oversight about how things are spent on specific projects, regardless of when it happens, whether it happened last year, this year, the year after. Okay, right. So you guys should be really careful. I don't write that book and I don't write the motions. So, so perhaps people have to be a little bit more careful about how they write the motions. But well, this is exactly how we've done this since 2017. Okay, and then that leads us back to the political problem of, do you really, we're left with saying, we think we recommend $350,000 for things we don't know <laughs> what they are specifically. I mean, that it, it's, it's a difficult thing to ask the voters to vote sort of blindly on, um, on, on a general fund. I would feel very badly about asking them to vote. You know, I, I understand all your problems. I understand right. that you don't know when it's gonna happen and you've got a funny, you know, working year, but you, it's, we've got the issue of you're asking the voters to vote blindly. And secondly, I think no, we, I'm and I'm I not. think- it, It's not blindly, I'm, I'm sorry. It's not. Well, it, without, it's not. without knowing specifically what it is that they're voting for. And I think perhaps we also, it would be a good idea to ask Deb if we can sort of change the accounting a little bit from year to year so that whoever is looking at this could go back and say, well, you know, this was, allocated this was you know this much was spent this year and this much was spent this year on the fire station kitchen 
so that we know where approximately $70,000 went. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's easy enough to do. Okay. Yeah. Can, Sean, I have a question here because you have listed the red is new or not expected to be completed. It looks like you've mixed up both lists. If you took off the stuff that was on last year on that list and left just in red the ones that are the new items, would that solve this presentation? Because I think it looks like you've got combined both ongoing and new items in this list. And yes. you say that you have or, red is new or not expected to be completed. And I think they are looking for just red is new. I, I don't totally understand the question. There's okay, not so all of them are completely new, some of them are in process. Is that what right, you're saying? Right, but I think, no, I think, well, that you, you say that some of them are in process, which, you know, Corey read the list, we voted on it. If you took off the ones that are in process, on the list and only left the ones that are new. Yeah, I was I trying to come up with a simple way to reconcile it, obviously. Didn't yeah, work. no, so, so I think if you take, cause you, you say that it's new or, but I think if you get rid of the or part, I think all they're looking for tonight is what is the new? I think it's great to you to report on, this is what we voted on. I haven't spent it yet, it's still coming, but for this discussion, that's not really needed. I think what we're just looking at what is, get rid of the or stuff and just say, what was the new items like? the HVCA upgrade, the transfer station, you know, the town campus yeah. public water well, supply. So yeah, I was actually, trying to preempt, I think, what yeah, I was I think trying to preempt I... was they would, they would ultimately ask, as soon as I, as soon as I presented yeah. it with, with, without the in-process things, they would have said, well, how much money does he have? And Deb would have said 176,000. And, right. you know, then I would have been scrambling to find it. So I put it all right. in here, shame yeah. on me. No, I think I got confused. I should have tailored it down. No, I think it got confused. I think your data is here. Um, it's just, it's confused with both. And I think if we got rid of it, it would answer what Corey's looking for tonight is what is the new items? That's a good suggestion. There are five new items and four um, old items that are on this list. And I'm, and I'm not counting the blue garage doors and gutters. Right, so if you put those five items in a different color, maybe, you know, those, those would be the new items. Which are they? Town hall roof replacement, town hall HVAC, transfer station electrical, dry hydrant repairs, and public water supply PFAS treatment. All right, uh, transfer station, uh, you, you read a little faster than I could color here. Uh, dry hydrant, uh, dry, dry hydrant, and what was the last one? Um, the town campus public water supply, okay. TFAS okay. treatment. Okay. And so, hmm. Actually, if you take that and add it to the 90,000 from the uh, on-site insight, that comes out, I think, to 360. Those, if I, let's see, did, them, did it right? Well, Corey, you said what amount for the on-site insight? Uh, I think it was 90,000 approximately, and, I, and I'm just... Um, Sean it would probably be, uh, 380,000. 380. <clears throat> Sean, you might get an extra 30,000 out of this. Perfect. I was looking for that. <laughs> So those five add up to 290. And we want to get it to 350, which would make a $60,000 contingency. Well, there isn't that, isn't there that other list of um, on site, inside things? Or does, is that list consumed in this? 
That's what that list is, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, so is it is it actually not just 280,000 then? Maybe with some buffer? Well, the, the only problem is, is if you go back to that list, Where did Sorry, it I'm go? Getting there. This That's one? fine. Yeah. So, in we we we've agreed that, you know, what what I have on the books is one hundred and seventy nine thousand dollars, of which, a hundred thousand dollars is going to be paid here shortly, which leaves eighty thousand dollars, and those other items that are, are, you know, have been, funded for before, total up to more than the. $79,000. So to, to get those completed, there has to be additional funds. But don't, don't we want to be more specific as to which particular project of these needs the more money? Like going back to the, the voters, yeah. as, as Corey had indicated, we can say, you know, look, uh, we, we didn't have enough money because of other overruns uh, or you know, the costs were higher than estimates. So <clears throat> we're going to do the police station prisoner cell plumbing fixtures that need to $50,000 or, or something that, again, tying the money that's allocated to a particular project, even if it's internal accounting. I, I, I agree. Not just, uh, hey, you have this additional 90000 Sean, is there uh, a, you know, looking at the the ones that are highlighted in, in yellow here, the red that are not new, do you have a sense of whether any of these are going to have grants or, or you know, the estimates are off or that you need more money for them or something? I thought I was muted. Um, the, uh, well, the, uh, The air handler at the at the fire station is one might be offset what by an air handler. I mean by a grant. We need to spend some engineering, um, some HVAC engineering on it. And then prior to going out to bid, I I think there's gonna be some green communities grant that can that can help with that. It, it's hard to kind of it's hard to balance that until we actually do it. I tap I've been tapping the brakes on the kitchen because the air handlers on the in the fire station are above the kitchen. If that makes any sense, the last thing I want to do is remodel a kitchen and then tear it apart, rip the ceiling out so I can change the air handlers. So the unfortunate thing is. The, es the kitchen price has probably escalated because I sat on it. Um, but we probably need to address the air handlers. But uh, until we either go out to bid or really just get, get some HVAC engineering in there, we don't we don't know exactly now. <clears throat> Do you have any greater fidelity on some of these other estimates? On the forty thousand for the fire department DPW tight tank replacement or the town campus. Well, actually, the tank town campus improvement is in green. I pulled it way back. Completed. Yeah, I, I pulled it way back to just what I didn't have enough area in there for the for the description. Mo, ARPA covered most of what was left, except for some campus lighting. The lighting around the police station in the back of town hall is is hasn't been touched. So that, that was always on there. It was significantly more. The whole project was significantly more. But we we dedicated some ARPA money. There's been some other library money that's gone towards some of the stuff. Um so I held on to some for, for the lighting around the police station. The that lighting thirty thousand dollars. What's that? Is the $30,000 is essentially something in addition to what you've already done. Yeah. 
Most that, of what we did, that might be most one that could be justified paper. with a new allocation. No, that's just what's left. We 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 haven't touched the lighting. We did paving. No, no but Sean, Sean, what I'm saying is, if you're going to the town voters and you're saying I'm, we need I'm not. more you're money going to the for town voters, I, I'm not. I'm telling you, that's what's left. You can you can you can pull it out, but it's going to come out of the next year's money. There's there's a disconnect, but between what you think I'm going to the town voters with and what I'm going to the town voters with. Well, we there's, need there's to a, know what you're going to the town voters with, Sean. Well, I'm not. We're, we're I'm going to the town voters or not with. recommending. You're not going to not recommend the money, but what I what I bring we, forth, Sean, if we don't it's, have it's, faith in how it's going to be spent, I'm not going to recommend the money. That, I, I'm fine. a minority, but I I'm letting you know I need to know <laughs> what the, how and, the money is going to be spent. And I, and I understand your point, but if you drive through town campus and the lights are all out, you're going to say, Sean, you should probably fix these lights. And I'm going to say, well, it's part of a campus project. And I'm telling you that what I brought forth was an article to fund the projects for town buildings, as I was told to do. Part of that is what's left of a town campus project outside of what was funded by the ARPA, which is some lighting, which hasn't been done yet. If you want to pull it out of there, you can and we'll spend it out of the money that's left. You asked me for a spreadsheet of what was left. That's what's there. That's not a new project. That's just what's still outstanding. Take it off if you want. Right. Don't put it in the don't don't put it in the town meeting warrant book. I don't write that. Sean. I just write what's in the ask. And I was asked to Sean. provide the spreadsheet so I did. And and we appreciate we appreciate that. What it looks like is that the money that was allocated based upon your current estimates of future work is insufficient to cover all that work. So you need to ask for more money for existing projects that you've already had money allocated for. Yes, yeah, so it was so always in order to go to the town. You want to say this is a project that we we, we I know you already voted on. But we're short because the project was more expansive than initially. There was cost overruns to justify why the town is going to vote for more money for the same project. And I was just suggesting that this town campus improvement one, as it seems like it was sort of split, might be one that you could justify to the town saying why then more money needs to be allocated for the same project. Sure. That's but, fine. Right, that you, 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 Sean, you need to propose to us what you think is the is the best ask to go to the town and say we need more money for projects that were already allocated money. Okay. The the disconnect. If you look at the on-site insight report from day one, year one was never funded. We've always been several years behind. So it's difficult for me to try to swallow the pill that I was underfunded on projects. I was, we took projects and we said, okay, here, let's cherry some, pick some projects and make the number look like it's right. So what you're doing is asking me professionally to, to make it look like I did a bad job estimating projects and I didn't. Okay, I didn't I estimate what the library the... was gonna cost. I didn't estimate what the site work was gonna cost for the library, but I always said, we have no idea what this debacle is going to cost to fix. And that's where all, a lot of the money went. A lot of the money went towards fixing the, the, the parking lot that got screwed up by the library. And I'm sorry that the taxpayers had to fund that. But we never, fit, we never satisfied year one of the on-site insight report. So now what, we're, what you're asking me to do is mm -hmm. reconcile every, all the mistakes that were made and I'm not gonna own those, okay? I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is tell you that at least $350,000 needs to be spent so we can cover some of the things that have happened since then. But I'm not gonna take the fall for the library, the site work, the well that had to get fixed and everything else that's had to happen on town campus that I've had to fix in the past five years. Those are just things that have happened. Okay, and the town voted to do that. The town voted to fund it, and the town needs to vote to fund 
some more capital. If they don't, that's fine. But the roof's going to keep leaking at Town Hall and other things. But stop, you can't keep asking Sean Colleen to foot the to shoulder the entire fault of all the mistakes that were made in the past decade. That's what you're asking me to do. I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> the town campus needs lighting, and I'm telling you that we probably need to spend thirty thousand dollars. If you think that was already funded, vote against it. So, so Sean, if things are already been allocated money towards that project, and for whatever reason, there's not enough money to pay for it, then it's going back to the town and saying, there's, we understand you voted for this before, we didn't have enough money to pay for it, we're asking the town to, to pay the, for essentially of this project, the, the last bit of it, right? Because there's, um, but look, you know, you, you could choose what project to, to go back to the town and say, we need more money to pay for it or, or not. You don't have to ask the town for money to pay for these projects and we'll just go unfunded to complete them. Like, or, Sean, or maybe uh, operating, whatever, yeah. but. Sean, let me ask, perhaps we can present this as, um, and, and I have one question before I, I tell you that. You're looking, this adds up to $480,000, all of the new things and all of the old unfinished things adds up to 480. And you um, requested 350. So I'm in an ideal situation, you know, if the 480 was or the 350 was going to go to this specific list of things, what things were you expecting? Um, Corey, uh, Corey, I'm not sure he's on the call any longer. Oh. I, I don't see him. Does anybody else? No, I don't see him either. Because I'm thinking what we can do is if we say, and I'm just saying the 350 that he asked for, and if we can say that the 350 is for these um, projects from whatever, and we take the five new things and other uncompleted projects so that we're covering part of the, you know, four yellow things, and then just put, a, put the 350 on it, that will, I think, fairly represent what we're, do, what we're asking the voters to vote for. And they have an option, they have the opportunity to kind of have a sense of where the money's going. Um, it's not gonna cover everything because the things that he, he himself said, it adds up to 480 and he's only asking for 350, but at least it'll, I don't, and we can write the, the recommendation that way. I'm sorry, well, Corey, I wasn't tracking uh, exactly what you were saying. About <laughs> but I, I, I guess he, I, I I think it's really all in the presentation and I, I understand trying to get the numbers to line up because if he says it's for $580,000, which is past projects and everything else like that, he's asking for 350, right? Right. So, and the past, and then he has $179,000 from last year. He would have to be asking more for more than the three hundred and fifty thousand dollars to complete all those projects. So maybe what he needs to do is one of those projects that he has listed as new projects. He just can't do, or it has to fall into FY twenty five. I mean, the, the, the I think the whole point was to have the number go down, but now we're making it go up. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and the other point was is to give some rationale to the voter about what the 350 is for. I agree. And um, if we take four of the new things and say the 350 is for these things and other uncompleted projects or uncompleted prior projects mm -hmm. or language like that then at least we can give it. And that's exactly what we're doing, actually. <laughs> we're making up for the things that didn't get done before. 
and um, looking at some new things. I mean, we it's way under the number though, right? I mean, 290 is the, the new project. 179,000 is the amount that he had for the sort of old project. That's yeah. a total of 469,000. Well, I think now, there's, was... there's a range. There's a range to some of them. So yeah, if you and... take the upper end of this, the range, this is the low. Is yeah, we're dealing upper, with the low number. Numbers. Well, right. I think right. I think Deb's suggestion was that one of the new things get dropped in the pitch or in the description of what the 350 is for. Uh, well, I mean, you know, that that's kind of this though, but like. <clears throat> I mean, it, it adds up to 580. All of it adds up to 580,000. Yeah. So you're right. talking about $121,000. And this is on the low, low, low range of the these estimates, right? Right. So, I mean, you're going to have to knock this one out and at least, you know, these two or these three. Like, I mean, it, it, there's, there's a deficit. And, and I'm not saying it's, John's fault that things are more expensive than some estimate from this report from five years ago, but there just needs to be an accounting as to, you know, how much, yeah. what, what, do you, what do you need to finish the projects that were already allocated and, and then, you know, these new projects need to be done and that's well, additional allocation. Yeah. What if we describe it as um, finishing prior projects and beginning <laughs> these five projects and use that language. I mean, the fiscal controls would be better if it was identifiable projects and the money is allocated towards them full stop, right? I yeah. Mean, and, and it's not mm -hmm. like, I mean, Sean said that if something happened tomorrow, he would just reach into the money and just allocate it to something else. And I don't, that's, that's not right. That kind of goes back to the whole operating versus capital, because you know some things do happen, and he has there's no money in the operating capital for these unexpected things, so that's why well, that that's a problem. <laughs> that doesn't mean he misappropriates money from another fund. Well, it's, it's not I misappropriation mean, because because of the way he words because the way the Warren articles in court is worded, it says the it's based on everything on the inside on-site report well it's in that report but the timing is different than what he had planned to do so i think that that's the the justification for it's not just misappropriating funds it's just the timing is is different than what was anticipated uh, and look i you know i'm, I'm relatively new here you know so I just think that a capital budget expenditure should be for a set project that meets the criteria and it's been decided by the town. Not that it just happens to be on some on-site report on page 522 in the back that no one's ever seen before. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing. I, I think Sean's argument all along has always been it, in to be practical, it it doesn't work like that in his world. But, you know, we, Jer, Jeremy is, uh, you know, the new town administrator, this was his job in another community. Okay, so maybe he can shed some light on to us on how the other community has done it. Obviously, we're not, we're not alone. Every community has a DPW and they do this. So maybe it's the way, you know, the way we're structured or the, may, the way we've been doing it in the past. Maybe that has to change, and maybe Jeremy can shed some light on that. Yeah, and, and, and I, I think I, that how it's phrased, if if it is going to be a slush fund, it has to be defined for the voters that this money can be used for whatever purpose that they deem fit as a capital. You know, like I mean, it should be perfectly like very obvious to the voters that it doesn't have to go to those projects. I, I'm not disagreeing with you, and I think that that's that's what Sean would have liked to done. Be, but he's always been encouraged and asked to 
you know, list specific projects. So that's what he's done with the caveat following the on-site insight report. So, you know, I, I understand what you're saying yeah. completely. And I, I think it's- I, I mean, know, I think best practice is that it is a per project basis, um, but, um, you know, yeah. the, the voters voters of the town should know what they're signing up for. And I think that, the, as Corey said, that when a voter reads the article, they understand it's going to be allocated towards those projects. Yeah, I would be interested in hearing what Jeremy has to say on how, how they did it, just because, you know, again, you know, Sean's argument has always been, it doesn't work that way. And so I, I don't know how other communities handle it, to be quite honest. Yeah, and I feel like DPW is getting whipsawed around a little bit too. So, I mean, Sean, Sean doesn't want it to be handled the way I think it has been handled. I mean, it, it seems pre pretty clear to me that he didn't agree with this, and but it was dictated to him, so. Well, I think that whatever, I think talking to town administrator is a good idea because he does have experience in this. Um, whatever, if, if we agree that the current practice is muddled, is, if, if that's a good word for it, <laughs> between what the voter votes on at town meeting and what actually happens, um, if we're going to try and clarify that, I don't think we can accomplish it. I, I'm guessing that it'll, we won't do it all at once. We'll do it in steps. Um, and at least we can look at maybe there's a first step that we can take this year. Um, I, I feel badly that Sean has personalized this, that he feels like it's an attack on him. It's it's really kind of, we have to express how we think this is going to appear at town meeting. And I think it's, unless you have something specific discussed or mentioned, it, it just um, is not appealing to the voter. So um, I don't know what to do at this point other than talk to Jeremy. Shall we do that? Incidentally, Heidi, uh, yeah. Heidi, I think your suggestion about divvying up the new things from the old things was an excellent idea. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I agree. Yes, yeah, either Sean, Jeremy, or the select board. Okay. In that in that order that we'll have to. Uh, I mean, Peter, do you have any insight from advisory on, uh, you know, what advisory's views are generally about how the funding of the DPW and all these projects should be done? I mean, is Sean, Sean right that advisory would say, just take it out of capital budget funding if the new something breaks tomorrow? Well, being an advisory for six years, and when I asked earlier this month uh, for Deb to give an accounting of all the town votes for capital, I was under the impression that each line item that was voted on, because those are all listed out, uh, was accounted for and that money would roll. And and I, I get that it was an amorphous pot that was geared towards the 20 year report with specific projects that were planned. Okay. All right. Well, it sounds like the plan is to, to talk to some some people and try to get our arms wrapped around this on on the best way to proceed. Starting with Jeremy, perhaps is that right? Or I, I don't know if if a one on one with someone with with Sean makes sense or how that works. But at least make sure that he's 
understands this. This is not a ad hominem attack on him personally. Well, I, I I'm probably more accessible during working hours to go talk to Jeremy than either of you two gentlemen. So I can take on that. Uh, I'm I'm happy. I mean, I, I work from home uh, enough that if if there's a time during the day to to go to the town hall, it's you know two and a half minutes over my house. So <laughs> okay. I, I could jo I could join you. Okay. Um, let me see if I can. So, say I mean, I'd be interested to know what his perspective is and and how he thinks things should be handled. Okay. Can't Although we can't time. actually meet it, we can't be in the same room at the same time, though, right? Because then we correct. Have, like, we have to post it as a meeting. Yeah. Peter Galatano, do you have any insight about this? You've got the longest experience with it, or the most recent experience with it. My six years on advisory uh, was uh, the Middle Ages. Yep, no, 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 <laughs> and and it was it was the what should be in the operating budget for that year to maintain uh, the uh, buildings uh, for normal wear and tear. Um, and always trying to get more into that budget has always been the, the, the challenge. And then Sean's comment, which does hold out with history, is that we've capitalized many of the delayed or deferred maintenance items until they became a project. Um, and that you know, we've always listed out those specific projects that absorb the capital ask. How, how do you feel about trying to be specific in the ask for the amount, the appropriation at town meeting? Being specific about what's what projects are in the ask. I've always been under the impression that the sum of the capital requests tied back to the best estimates of the project, whether um, they were true estimates at the time or best guesses uh, when it came time. And again, this was pre-COVID, COVID, post, um, we're not post-COVID, but uh, phase nine COVID, whatever we're in, in COVID. Um, but I understand the need for flexibility. That's, uh, thus I suggested the contingency. Uh, which was always 10% of any building project is always a contingency for things that happen. But if it's if it's illustrated that way, of the unknown factor, the contingency factor, at least we're open and notorious about what we're asking the town, the voters for. And I, I think that's the end goal is to make a recommendation and and stick by it because funds will be tight projects take on a life of their own as we've seen recently currently and um, we have to be accountable to the voters Here's a hypothetical. If if we um, decided to recommend the 350, the full amount, how would you, what points would you include in the write-up? The new projects, which total on the low end, 
290 on the upper end 405 and is that right in the middle 350 So bump up each of the projects till it gets to from 290 to 350. And so, Deb, if, if all of the projects come in and they come in under the 350, we don't, and, and Sean corrected me, and, and remind him that I, it did cite that he corrected me. We just don't borrow that excess. Mm. Heidi could speak to that a little bit better, but she normally does the borrowing prior to the money being spent. Is that not right, Heidi? Correct. It's usually we borrow. Um, actually, I borrow it in chunks. Uh, what I'm doing is asking, so if there's $400,000 that was appropriated for buildings, I've looked to say, where do we spend? Where do we think we're going to spend in the next six months, one year, 18 months? And I borrow, like I've borrowed 200000 on it before. And then I don't long-term bond it till it's actually spent or close to it till we hit 75% at least. So you just, you're just giving a, giving a number. Right, because then just town, the numbers you have meeting. here, yeah, three fifty. Would like this one if that's what you okay. approve. I'll have three fifty for town buildings. Okay, so you then you, you float it. The money comes in, hits that low interest bank account. We don't spend it all. So, right, and I try not to borrow it. Like I probably will not borrow the full three fifty. I'll borrow two hundred of the three fifty if that's what we're going to spend within the next year. Like I try to say, what do we expect to spend within the next year? All right. And so, Deb, what happens to those funds from All Town Meeting twenty twelve that weren't? And I'm just making a number up that weren't spent. We didn't. Did we borrow it and? Maybe we didn't borrow. Well, we don't know whether we borrowed it or not. But if have, there is a, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, we have some extra. Like Deb has a list, and we're we're going to be going to rescind and and some of the borrowing amounts that have been left over. Like there might be seven thousand on this project left over or whatever, and we're going to ask town meeting to reallocate them to like projects if we have like projects that are needed. Um, what we rescinded recently oh. was elder housing. We had a vote for 350,000 on the books that we'd never borrowed because they weren't using it. Um, and that was, we ended up rescinding it because it became too old to borrow against. But the idea is that you borrow, you long-term, you don't long-term bond till you've pretty much spent the money. You short-term bond up to that point. Okay. Then, but even so long-term that... bonding, yeah. No, no, that, that's helpful. So if there is a fund balance of 7,000 for the windows, yeah, right. then we go back to the voters and say, can we use this? You already earmarked it for the windows. We can use it for the windows, but we're going to use it for a town campus public water supply treatment. Uh, yeah, if it's well, for Woodhaven, you'll want it for what you want it for a similar project. It'll be another Woodhaven window project. We'd have to kind of have it in groups. Um, it does have to be like for a like project. It can't be, you can't yeah. completely flip it. You know, so let's say we have some money left over from Pine Hill paving. We could use that for maybe paving something else or maybe improvements on the Pine Hill access road that weren't included in the initial project, but it has to be similar. So if it's for town buildings, it could be used for other town buildings. Correct. If it was a town building project. Oh, well, that's ideal. Well, we don't have then that we... much left, though, in those. <laughs> but that would require a town meeting vote. And the vote only happens for us once a year. Right. If there is a fund surplus. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. So that means we've spent less than what we asked for. Correct. Because we had a contingency in there. Right. And the project came in. Um, what if it went the other way? What if we can't complete a project because it doubled in price? We're going to hope we didn't borrow it already, long-term borrow. Um, well, we, but we would have had to start it and spent the money if we long-term borrowed, right? And so we would. Right. We, so that we. I hope we wouldn't it. have done that. Right. No. But uh, well, the one the problem I have right now is the DPW pickup truck, the hundred nine thousand that was approved two years ago. Um, yep. It, I saw Ford, that on the list. Yep. Ford uh, has not delivered it because they kept canceling the orders due to supplies. So we, it was, we were given delivery date coming. We borrowed the short term, borrowed the money. They pushed it out. So then on last August, I said, do we have to borrow it again? What's going to happen? And again, Ford said, oh, yep. Now we're giving you a 2023 model. Short term borrowed it. We don't have it yet. And I've got to the point where I can't roll it over again in another short term note unless we start doing a principal pay down or do we just pay off the whole thing? Is the price going to be the same? Do we have to go back to the town for a vote? That's one thing I'm trying to work right now with um, the financial advisors trying to figure out what is the town going to have to do for that item. And it might be the best thing is we just pay off the 109,000 so that we're not stuck with the borrowings. But I'm not going to long term, I could not long term borrow it, borrow it because it was, uh, we didn't have it. Right. You don't have any asset. Right, but if I, if it does come in that now it's one hundred and fifteen thousand, we'd have to go back to town meeting or figure out some other way that we're only allowed to. We only have one hundred nine thousand approved. Do bake sales count? <laughs> uh, do we need a steering wheel on the car? Maybe that could be yeah. the extra. <laughs> yeah. Three wheels. Right. Right. Uh, no, no. This 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 is this is helpful because it does frame. Uh, the mechanics of accounting treasury with all town meeting and the, the, this course is the politics of it, the presentation and recommendation. Right. You know, and actually the well one for Leland, we did go and resend that voting article for borrowing because we were able to get funding for it. So when the voters had voted to borrow it, we, I went back and we did go and actually rescind that borrowing. Right. When the right. when the library's finally completed, there will be some part that we will go to. We didn't long term borrow the full amount that we were authorized, so we do want to rescind that part of the borrowing. So, in the realm of town buildings, it's not a vehicle situation where someone's going to withhold a building part. That can't be replaced, right? So if right. if if again, I think I'm just repeating myself. If we can't get the HVAC units, mm -hmm. we can go the next town meeting and say, can we do the um, well project for town buildings? Right, and if we I mean, haven't long term Peter, borrowed it, it's okay. You know, part of the problem here is that I think we don't have very good bids and an estimate as to the cost of these things. They're just numbers pulled off of a consultant report from four years ago, right? There's there's no contractor or somebody who's looked at the project and said, okay, it's going to cost X amount of dollars. I could start in six months. I mean, that that's inherently part of the problem here for getting some fidelity with these estimates. Is, is, has anyone looked at this? Has anyone actually priced it out within the last four or five years? So, but I mean, if, if you have a, gr a greater estimate based upon somebody's bid or, or somebody who's looked at it and, the, and is willing to do the work, then I, I think if you put in that 10%, then, you, you know, you should be able to protect yourself from most cost overruns. You know, whatever the contingency, ten percent, fifteen percent, but we don't we don't have that, which is part of the problem. And then there's just sort of the slush fund that is money just gets pulled out. I mean, 
and unfortunately, I, I feel like if we allocated 350, it's still not enough to cover these projects. The money that's already, you know, projects that have already been identified in the future projects, it's not going to cover it based upon even the low estimates. I mean, the, the hole is, is, is already there. Um, and I feel like there just needs to be some, a greater allocation and, and then fidelity as to, okay, this is what the cost is. And, and this is the money that's allocated towards, towards these particular projects. Don't, don't use it for something else. This is, you know, this is what it has to be used for. I, I, I agree with you. And I guess kind of along with what Corey started the whole conversation with, what is that priorities? Because is it really realistic to accomplish all these projects? If it is, then the allocation should be higher. If it's not realistic to complete all these projects, well then prioritize the ones you can complete and borrow that amount of money. <clears throat> and as Corey said, these are projects that need to be done. It's, I don't think we disagree I, with that. So I, I we just need to make sure we have the sufficient resources, get them done in the reasonable time frame that we want them to be, right? Which is, do we do we have the people who are going to be able to do all these Correct. contractors? Are they lined up? Can we get the, the necessary supplies? within this fiscal year, in theory, or the next fiscal year. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Inter yeah, interestingly enough, the uh, of the five new projects, which wound up being a 480, is that what we're looking at? Um, the ones that were not addressed in Onsite Insight, and Onsite Insight actually built in you know, some inflation multipliers as they went on, you know, out the years. But of course they couldn't have accounted for this last year. So we kind of have to kick that up a little. But the two that were not in that are the problem with the electrical at the transfer station and the dry hydrant system. The things that, that Sean's calling infrastructure, that's 140,000 and if you take the 140,000 out of the 480, you're pretty close, you're 340. You're almost at the 350 that Sean's asking for. So I don't know whether, I don't know why he picked 350. Corey, it sounds like you also just need to do a reset vote here to catch up when all the supply chain issues and things that happened in COVID. I think almost if you could word it that there's a certain amount of money that needs to be voted this year to, supp to supplement. I think you're looking for a supplemental vote on projects because of the COVID and the supplies and the issues that we've had to try and clean it up and move forward with the new process. Well, folks, we've got a little bit more business to do. <laughs> Should we go ahead and do that? <laughs> um, unless anybody has anything else to, to contribute. Um, we, let's see, we did the, we did the minutes. We've gone through the things we had to do. Oh, I guess there's two things. One is I did hear from Kitty Sturgis, who is elder housing. And at first they thought that they were going to have a project. And I guess they have to replace their lifts and elevators. And then she came back and said, no, they didn't think they were going to do it this year. They were going to put it off. And she asked about having three bids because they only deal with one company that makes these things and she wasn't sh sure if where'd she find two other bids so um 
I, I'll just have to confirm with her. I did reply and say that I, do I understand you that you're not going to put something forward this year? Hadn't heard back from her yet. Um, and I think under that situation, it'd be kind of tough for her to come up with two more bids, but at least one hard bid would be better than some of the things we've seen. Um, and the other question we have is, we were originally scheduled to meet um, next Tuesday, but it was for the schools and we've taken care of that. So I don't know if you want to meet for some other reason or whether we can um, just go meet on the 14th, which is our, would be our next meeting. Let me address the first one. Um, if, if, and this may be a, a Deb or Heidi question, if the vendor is on the um, sanctioned list from the state, like an elevator contractor that has a state contract, right. that uh, can't you just use them because it's the purchasing yeah. power of the state? Correct. Yeah, then she doesn't need to get the three the three bids. Okay. I don't know whether it's off a state list or not. I'll ask her that. Oh, because she she wants the, the one that maintains. Yeah, and it and it depends a little bit on the dollar amount too. I I don't know what kind of dollar amount she's talking about. And I have no idea. She didn't tell me. So, yeah. How do people feel about meeting on the seventh or just going to the fourteenth? I don't know. I feel like we have some some issues to work out. Um, Sort of DPW wise. Yeah, could we come um, back? So with... I don't know if we're going to have answers yet from you think from conversations by next week or? Well, I'll, I'll try and make an appointment as soon as I can. Yeah, I do yeah, think it's that... that you have to meet solo. I guess we can't. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we just invite Jeremy to speak to us next Tuesday or something. Yeah, because well, that's not a bad idea, Peter, because I yeah. do believe that Jeremy's out of the office next uh, on Thursday and Friday of this week, or maybe on okay. Friday. I'm, yeah. Okay. I think it's Thursday and Friday. Okay. What? If, well, what if we just made the next meeting on the seventh um, to discuss this issue specifically, and and specifically invite Jeremy and give him a heads up about what we're talking about so that uh, he can kind of come with, I hope he comes with solutions <laughs> or good suggestions. <laughs> uh, and Peter Galatano, you may have some information. Have you done DPW at advisory or is it tomorrow night? Uh, it's tomorrow night. So we get the pleasure of doing this all over again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, Hopefully you can convey to um, Sean that again we, we're not we're not trying to make this personal. We're just trying to figure stuff out and and ultimately we we might think that he his request was too small, frankly. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> Corey. Yes, Jane. Uh, real, real quick, Kitty did ask that we take off the elevator and lifts off the warrant. So okay. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it's not happening this year. Good. <laughs> okay, thanks, Jeannie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and Peter, be sure and tell Sean I just sound tart. I'm not really mad. <laughs> no, no, a budget season doesn't go by unless... Um, we have engaging conversations with Sean. <laughs> and what again, he, he has a very unique perspective from all of his roles and uh, peripheral vision of what goes on. Yeah. And we only get the small view of that each year. So he's yeah. trying to reconciling those perspectives. And the towns never look better. I mean, I, I think he does a good job. It's, it's just <laughs> pulling out the details, <laughs> extracting information. Well, I guess maybe that this is going to win a record, our longest meeting. 
Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm a believer in one hour meetings. <laughs> so if we don't, so we're gonna meet on the seventh. We're going to specifically invite Jeremy to come. Um, Deb and Heidi, do you wanna proffer the invitation to him? Oh yeah, I can do that. Okay. And maybe you can kind of fill him in a little bit on what we've been talking about. I certainly will. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? Oh, Peter Moore's hand went up right away. <laughs> and I'll Peter Galatano is going to second I'll it. I'll second that. Okay. I'm going to vote aye. Corey Lincoln, aye. Peter Moore's aye. aye. Peter Galatano? Aye. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.